Have you decided what food product you're going to import? Because that's the very first step. Why you want to import that specific product or why you want to import food products? So, how are you going to find if there is a demand for your product? Who is going to be your audience? So basically, when you have shortlisted all these, it will help you in deciding the packaging for your products as well. Who is going to be your supplier or who is going to manufacture your product? One question I get asked a lot is, uh, do I need an import license for importing food products into the UK? So the blanket answer or the general answer for that is most of the food products, they do not need an import license for our food products as well. You know, I haven't, I do not need an import license. Only there are certain uh, food products that you need an import license. One would be if you are importing rice that is over a ton. If you import over a ton of, uh, you know, rice from India, then you will have to apply for an import license each and every time that you import from India. The other thing is, this is not specifically for India, but generally importing from abroad into the UK. Any animals or animal related products or animal derived products, you know, so it can be any milk related products as well. So those kind of products, if you are importing, then you have to see specifically on the gov.uk website, you might need an import license. Otherwise, generally, you don't need an import license for many of these products. So there are three types of food products you know according to the shelf life so you've got something called ambient or dry food products you've got chilled and you've got frozen food products so ambient or the dry food products is the general food products like we said earlier the ready to eat snacks or you know the dals lentils rice or anything that remains in the room temperature or is stored in the room temperature comes under the ambient food product the next is the chilled which means those are the food products that is kept in the refrigerator or the fridge which again we don't have an option of bringing it from India because uh, usually the chilled food products have got only a couple of weeks of uh, shelf life so that is not an option for bringing it from India. So the other option is frozen food products. So bringing from India, the only two types we can bring is ambient or the dry food products, which average it has got a shelf life of one year or one to one and a half years maximum, 18 months maximum. Frozen food products, obviously as the name says, it will be kept at below minus 18 degree or minus 20 degrees and that will be kept in the freezer. Usually it has a shelf life of two to three years. So next is the different type of shipping that we can do. So as I said, we have ambient and frozen food products that we can bring from India. So ambient food products, again, it depending on the weight, if it's only small quantities, let's say up to 1000 kilos or 1500 kilos or something, then you can always bring it by air freight. But if it's a bigger consignment, then you will be bringing it by ship. Let's say fresh fruits and vegetables. So those will be brought by air consignments because they are considered to be the perishable food items. So it has to be brought either by DHL, FedEx, UPS, you know, or any of those uh, air couriers so it will be coming in the airplane and uh, that's how it will be um, landing in the one of the airports here in the UK so it can be Gatwick Airport, Heathrow Airport, Birmingham, East Midlands, Manchester so one of these airports it will be uh, you know these cons these consignments will be delivered and um, if it's bigger consignments and of the ambient or the dry food products then it will be coming by sea that is in a ship in a container load and um, if it's a frozen as well it is coming in a container load so the slight difference is there are two types of containers one is LCL which is less than a container load which means you are taking only a part you know space in a full in a container so you won't be taking a full container load but for frozen that option is not there there is no option of bringing part container loads from India or from abroad into the UK so it is only full container load that you can bring for a frozen food product that is a big disadvantage so you have to bring minimum 10 tons you know when you are importing frozen food products but for ambient what you can do is you can say that you are bringing like um, maybe one pallet of goods so 
one pallet will be taking two cubic meter of space. So if it's two pallets, then it will be taking four cubic meter of space. So according to the space in the container, they'll be charging you for uh, the shipping rates. That's how they do with the part container loads. Top five ports uh, where the containers come in the UK are, it is, uh, you've got Felixstowe, which is the most popular. Then you've got Tilbury, London Gateway, Southampton, Immingham, Liverpool. So these are the ports that uh, the containers come into. So when you're getting your consignments ready, what you need to keep in mind is you get your paperwork and everything ready and give it to the freight forwarder so that they can, you know, do all the customs work here. Else, what happens is it can get delayed and you will be paying a lot of port charges or the demerage charges. So regarding the paperwork, it's a basic paperwork usually. So you've got the invoice, the commercial invoice, the packing list, the bill of lading if it's coming in the ship or the airway bill that's like if it's coming in the air freight and specifically because it's coming from India you need to make sure that uh, the supplier or your uh, you know the manufacturer in, in India they mention the country of origin because after uh, you know December 2020 uh, because of the Brexit you need to mention the country of origin in the invoice stating that the goods are made in India or the country of origin of these products are in India. So about the paperwork and everything, you can check out my other video called Importing into the UK, which I made last year, where I detail everything about these paperwork and the importing as well. So I'm not going to be explaining everything in detail in this as well. So you can check out that video. Now to talk about the things that you need to sort out here in the UK, because your container or the consignment is reaching the UK port. So here in the UK, the first thing is you need a EORI number. And uh, if you are getting perishable goods, uh, you know, like we said, let's say the mangoes or the vegetables or anything like that, then you need to be a DEFRA member. So you, what you need to do is you need to go to their website and register in the DEFRA Peach website because there can be random inspections at the airport by these health authorities so that, you know, they'll be inspecting and then they'll be authorizing it as well. So you need to be registering with the DEFRA Peach website. Again, I'll be leaving the link in the uh, description below. If it's a plant or plant related products, then you might need a phytosanitary certificate as well. Now, let me give you a bit of an idea about the costings that is involved once it reaches the port, because that's one question which many people have been asking me, not specific to any product or anything, but just to give you a rough idea so that you can calculate what the costings will be when you are doing the business or when you're starting all this. So let's say you are importing 1000 kilos of mangoes from India. Okay, so it is coming to the port. So average, it might be around 20 pence per kilo is what the airline charges. And now you've got this extra COVID charges as well. So it might be around 20, 25 pence per kilo will be the airline and the airline COVID charges. Then you've got another 100 pounds maybe for, maybe let's keep 100, 125 pounds for these uh, customs charges. Then because the goods come there to the warehouse and from the airport warehouse, it has to be delivered. If they have to break it down into single boxes then they might charge you another 10 to 12 pence per kilo for that so that is the overall cost that you need to add in the port you know in the airport so once it's all cleared what you need to keep in mind is for the air freight you will not be allowed to collect the goods like if your mangoes have come to the airport you will not be able to collect the goods from the uh, Heathrow airport or you know the airport which it comes because of health and safety reasons so you will have to speak to the airline uh, you know company or you'll have to speak to your supplier and tell them to arrange the local delivery to your premises or your warehouse as well so that's something which you need to keep in mind and if it's an air freight as I said these dry products can come in part containers which is like you know in the cubic meter let's say a pallet or it can come in a full container load as well so if it's a let's say you know you're by you're getting a pallet of uh, you're getting a pallet of banana chips so it will you'll be charged for that one pair size which will be around 350 to 400 pounds and if it's a 20 foot container depending on the port from which port you are uh, starting and which port it's coming up to as well so the, all the charges will vary depending on if it's Mumbai port if it's Cochin port or if it's uh, you know Gujarat port whichever it is it will vary the charges will be very very different so it this is just a rough idea as I said it can be around three thousand dollars maybe you know for a uh, for a ambient or a dry container 20 foot container to come from India into the Felix store or uh, the London port here and if it's a reefer container reefer container means it's for frozen container it can be around four thousand dollars and then you've got this customs charges and everything of another 250 or 300 pounds then you've got the duty rates also to pay duty rate or VAT or anything you have and for that also you have to pay all those kind of things so one thing which I wanted to just inform you is 
because of covid and uh, you know because the sh there has been a massive shortage of shipping containers now the shipping cost has gone up around four times compared to how much it was because last year it used to be 1500 or 1800 dollars for me to import a 20 foot container now it has gone over four thousand dollars so that is something which you have to keep in mind the shipping cost has gone very 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 expensive and uh, with regards to the sea freight so after all the clearance is done you can arrange the delivery from the uh, you know from the seaport from the port to your warehouse so it can either be through the freight forwarder if they have any facilities for that or you can speak to any transport company and then you can arrange a delivery so if it's a frozen transport then it has to be a frozen truck who does specific uh, you know the frozen delivery so what i do is I speak to the freight forwarder and I speak to my warehouse and see if they can arrange it for me because they have got contacts with them. So they'll arrange the delivery. So mostly it's the freight forwarders who can arrange the shipping, uh, you know, the delivery from the port to your warehouse. So you have to take it to a cold store. So once it reaches here, then, uh, you know, you can start selling it to, the, uh, to your customers. So that's basically the entire cycle or the entire journey of, uh, you know, the uh, food products coming from India into the UK. Hope you found this uh, video useful. If you did find it useful, please do share it with your friends or whoever you feel, uh, you know, will find this useful. And um, thank you very much for watching this video. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thank you. Take care and bye-bye.